We start this half hour with a financial stability report issued today by the International Monetary Fund. Its findings, non-bank corporate debt in some of the weakest euro area countries is simply unsustainable. CCTV's Tracy Tandon is live at the IMF in Washington with details. Tracy. That's right, Mike. The global financial stability report that came out today actually highlighted a lot of the key issues discussed by central bankers and finance ministers over the last few days here at the IMF World Bank meetings. In fact, one of the chief concerns addressed by them is the fact that a lot of banks in the 17-nation euro bloc continue to remain insolvent. And even some banks, not only in the eurozone, but even banks on the periphery of the eurozone are actually facing a lot of pressure due to elevated funding costs as well as um, uh, elevated funding costs and they said as well as deteriorating assets now earlier this morning I actually interviewed IMF chief financial counselor Jose Vinales who emphasized the fact that some of these banks may need to start shutting down because the cost of keeping these banks afloat is starting to become very detrimental to the global economy no I think that what is needed is to distinguish the uh, good banks from the banks which uh, need adjustment from the banks which are not viable. And I think that the economy doesn't get any benefit at all. Rather, there are costs to the economy if you keep alive zombie banks. So these banks need to be liquidated. Are you worried that competitive devaluations around the world are starting to set currency wars amongst emerging and developed countries? In recent years, uh, there's been a narrowing of global imbalances. Current account, countries with current account surpluses have reduced their surpluses. Countries with current account deficits have reduced these deficits. And this has been facilitated by movements in real exchange rates over the world. So I think that this is uh, working in the right direction. At the same time, um, I think that if you look at what's happening in the United States, what's happening in Europe, in Japan, all of these uh, uh, economies uh, which are in a less buoyant economic situation than emerging markets, the central banks are using monetary policies which are quite accommodative. And this is leading to uh, uh, portfolio effects which uh, results into uh, some depreciation of the currencies, for example, in the case of, in the case of uh, the, uh, Japan, and some depreciation of the dollar vis-a-vis -vis emerging market uh, currencies. But I think that these are uh, consequences of the domestic monetary policies which are geared towards supporting the economy. And this is not something which is a deliberate attempt to depreciate your currency to beggar thy neighbor. The net debt owed by Spanish banks to the ECB has been steadily dropping over the last few months. As former deputy governor of Bank of Spain, what do you think Spanish banks can do to ensure that they start to rebuild their strength? The Spanish authorities are on track uh, in terms of implementing the reforms of the banking system which are needed in order to have a, a potent banking system again. So Spain has undertaken uh, a major restructuring of their banking system, particularly of the Cajas sector. There is a lot of capital which is coming into banks. There are lots of provisions that banks have, uh, uh, you know, have added to the books. There is a new vehicle uh, which is, has been absorbing the sort of uh, bad assets, if you want, of, of banks in order to handle them in a centralized manner. So there are lots of things that uh, are being done there. And what we are emphasizing is just complete the job, continue making progress uh, so that uh, at the end of the day, we can say a mission accomplished. So a long road ahead for Europe there, according to IMF's Jose Vinales. Mike, tomorrow I'll be interviewing World Bank's managing director and former Indonesian finance minister, Sri Mulyani, and we're going to be talking about the markets in Asia, both in the emerging markets as well as the developed ones, and of course the challenges faced by these economies. Back to you, Mike. All right, Tracy, thanks so much.